So what I do before I go for a jog or for a swim. So with weight training, it's really, really important that you plan. In this video, you will learn everything you need to know about exercising with type 1 diabetes. Yo, shut up, dog. We'll talk about cardio, high intensity training, and even weight training. And no matter if you are on multiple daily injections or insulin pump, I have some pretty powerful tips for you to keep your blood sugars in control while exercising. Let's go. Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tom. I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel, I help you navigate your diabetes journey. Guys, many of you have asked me how I manage my blood sugars when I stay physically active and how I adjust my insulin dosage. And I will share my tips with you today. Because I use insulin pump and many of you are using multiple daily injections, I invited a guest who can share a perspective with you from the MDI world. And the guest is Becky, and she definitely spends much more time in the gym than I do, so she's a real expert on this topic. Hey Tom, thanks for having me. So if anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Becky. I have had type 1 diabetes for 16 years now, and I have been weight training for about four or five years. And like most people, I started running semi-seriously over lockdown and completed my first 10K in lockdown version one. I actually completed a year ago now, just over a year ago, a fundraising challenge for Diabetes UK where I squatted 40,000 kilograms over the course of four hours. So I, as you can tell, absolutely love exercising and I love the gym and I'm all about breaking down barriers to exercise for people with diabetes and taking away that fear and that intimidation. Hey Becky, thanks so much for being here with us today and sharing your tips for managing blood glucose around different forms of exercise. And we're gonna talk about cardio, high intensity training, and even weight training. So if you are interested in a specific topic, use the timestamps in the show notes. But now let's jump right into cardio. And the first thing I wanna discuss with cardio is low intensity or steady state cardio. This is anything from a walk or a jog or a swim or a light cycle. Now this form of exercise will, like most people expect, probably lower your blood sugar. So you want to make sure that before you start, your blood sugar is high enough so that you won't experience a hypo mid-session, but not too high because exercising with a really high blood sugar is actually going to put a lot of pressure on your nerves and can speed up the development of complications. So one thing that is recommended is to have some form of carbohydrate based snack 20 to 60 minutes before exercise. So for example, if I'm going to go on a short run, I'll normally have a banana with a reduced bolus injection before my run. If I'm going to have a longer run, I'll have a bit of a bigger meal like oats again with a reduced bolus and then I will just wait a little bit longer before heading out on my run so that I don't get a stitch. In this case you may see that your blood sugar does creep up before you actually start your training session but don't worry too much because it should come down pretty soon after you start exercising. Obviously though if it does creep up a lot then I would recommend having a little bit more insulin and waiting for it to come down a little bit before starting some form of exercise. Thanks Becky. So this was how Becky approaches cardio training from multiple daily injections perspective. Now let's talk about insulin pump. In insulin pump, we have rapid acting insulin running as the basal insulin 24 seven. And so if I start doing a cardio without adjusting this basal insulin, I can be sure that the insulin on board that I have, which is rapid acting, will crash my blood sugars really fast. So what I do before I go for a jog or for a swim, I reduce my basal rate to only approximately 20% of the standard basal rate. And and I do that 45 minutes before I start the physical activity. Now my blood sugar starts creeping up a little bit higher right before I start that physical activity. But I'm okay with that because I know that whenever I start running or whenever I start swimming, my blood sugar will start coming back down. On top of that, I eat a misli bar or a banana right before I start that physical activity, which will keep my blood sugar from dropping too low during that physical activity. And I know that this approach has me covered for approximately 45 to 60 minute 
cardio activity. Now what happens to me quite often 30 to 60 minutes after that cardio is that my blood sugar actually spikes and the reason for this is that my basal insulin was reduced during that physical activity. So after that activity I actually don't have a lot of insulin on board, not as much as I would normally have and that's why the blood sugar is spiking. And so what I do to avoid that is I take a small bolus, half unit or one unit of rapid acting insulin from my insulin pump to avoid my blood sugar spiking right after I finish that cardio activity. And by the way, I just recently started looping with the Tandem T-Slim X2 insulin pump and I use Control IQ. And you who use this Control IQ functionality, you know that you can set it to activity mode during your cardio exercise. So the activity mode on T-Slim X2 and reducing the basal rate on some other insulin pump are practically the same thing, very similar things. The next form of cardio that I want to discuss is HIIT, or high intensity interval training, or really any form of short burst high intensity exercise. Now with this kind of exercise, our blood sugars can sometimes do the opposite of what you might expect, and that is to increase. This is because with this kind of exercise, your body is put under a lot of stress very quickly and can release adrenaline. Now adrenaline will increase your blood sugar and that is why you may see a blood sugar spike if you start doing HIIT or intense training. So you might actually need to increase your bolus dose of insulin before starting a HIIT training session to avoid that blood sugar spike that adrenaline can cause. You probably won't want to give it too much of an extra bolus dose because obviously you don't want to be experiencing a high pose. And also once you start getting into the exercise, it's likely that your blood sugar will then start to decrease as your glucose is being used up to fuel your exercise. So one thing that you might find is that you need to eat some form of carbohydrate pretty soon after finishing any HIIT training session to avoid those hypos. But HIIT training sessions should be short and sweet anyway. Nowhere more than kind of 20 to 30 minutes. That's kind of the sweet spot for HIIT. So you likely shouldn't be experiencing hypos mid-session, even with an increased bolus dose beforehand. Now, one thing with HIIT that I find personally that not everyone finds is that I also experience a blood sugar dip around three to four hours after finishing my session. And this is likely caused by all of the hormones that are now flushed out of your body and it is just your body burning through all of that glucose. So I find that I need to reduce my bolus injection for any food that I eat three to four hours after HIIT training, or I might even need to have a snack if I'm not going to be eating around those kind of times. So if you are new to HIIT training, it's really important that you carry on monitoring your blood sugars even a few hours after training just to see whether you do experience that dip as well. And also, please, please, please carry high post snacks with you everywhere you go for that whole day. I mean, you should be doing this anyway, but be particularly vigilant after HIIT. These are some great points you shared, Becky, and I think I literally experienced all of these myself, although I use insulin pump. Now, just to add on that a bit, I don't actually increase my bolus before the high intensity training session. I figured that my blood sugar spikes just a bit during a high intensity interval training session and I'm not so concerned unless I get above 160 or 170 ish. One more thing that I experienced is that my blood sugar tends to drop even during the night after a high intensity training workout. So what I do to avoid that is that I reduce my nighttime basal insulin. Now I don't weight lift but I know you do Becky and you have some tips in that area as well. So take it away. Weight training can produce the same response as HIT in that it can produce adrenaline which can cause your blood sugars to spike when you start that session. Now it gets a bit more tricky because weight training sessions obviously differ massively between what kind of session you're doing. So if you're doing a session that is more low rep, high weight, long rest periods, kind of powerlifting style training, it's likely that you may experience that blood sugar spike because you are putting your body under a lot of strain very quickly. You're going to have a lot of adrenaline, but because you're not doing so many reps and you're not expending so much energy, you won't be burning through that glucose very quickly. And so you might have that higher blood sugar at the beginning. Whereas if you're doing a more high volume, higher rep, lower weight, shorter rest period training, you may still experience a bit of an adrenaline spike, but because you will be burning through so much energy to fuel that session, 
your blood sugar probably won't spike very much and if it does it will probably come down straight away as you are burning through that glucose to fuel yourself so with weight training it's really really important that you plan your session beforehand so you know exactly what style workout you're going to do and then can adjust your insulin dose accordingly so for example if you know you're going to be doing a powerlifting style slow and steady heavy workout you may want to be having more insulin whereas if you're going to be having a very intense high rep high volume session you probably want to reduce your insulin but there's no point in doing all of that and then changing your mind halfway through and changing your training style because then your insulin dose will be completely wrong for the session that you end up doing so it's important to have a plan and stick to it also if you do end up having to have more insulin for that powerlifting style, slow, heavy workout. Similarly to HIT, you may find that after the workout you need to eat pretty quickly because your body will then kind of catch up, start to burn through that glucose to repair your muscles, and that's when you may experience a blood sugar dip. So what I like to do personally is have a big bowl of protein powder filled oats. So I either fill it with like chocolate caramel protein or peanut butter protein, and then you get your carbs to replenish your muscle glycogen and protein to build up those muscles so you get an all over sports refuel plus a blood sugar refuel. The other thing is that no matter what type of weight training session you are doing, you will likely experience increased insulin sensitivity for up to eight hours after your session and even beyond that. The more beginner you are, the more prominent this increased insulin sensitivity is going to be because it's more at the beginning of a new workout journey or style of exercise that you're trying that you experience the most progress, whether that's in terms of fat loss, muscle building, increasing your metabolism or increasing your insulin sensitivity. The most progress always happens at the beginning because it's a new stimulus. So it's really important to monitor your blood sugars as closely as you can, especially after the first few sessions, because your body is adapting to this new style of workout. And it's likely that you will need to either decrease your bolus insulin, maybe even decrease your basal insulin after a short amount of time as you start to build up that muscle mass, which will increase your insulin sensitivity even at rest. Or you may need to have a few snacks and eat a bit more while you are adjusting to your new insulin ratios around your weight training sessions. Be prepared for experimentation from the beginning. Be prepared for some high blood sugars, some low blood sugars, and to feel like you don't know what you're doing. But stick with it and keep experimenting because eventually you will find that magic formula that works for you for every style of exercise. We're all different. Our bodies don't all react exactly the same to every single thing. So it's important to find what works for you. But please push through that sticky beginning bit when things are a bit tricky because ultimately it's going to help with your diabetes management. The more you exercise, the more muscle mass you build, which means the more you increase your metabolism and your insulin sensitivity, which means needing less insulin, which means less risk of having high and low blood sugars, which ultimately means a happier and healthier you. Boom! I love those tips, Becky, and I could not agree with you more. We are all different. Experimentation and sticking to what works for you is key. Obviously, we are not doctors. We are just sharing our journey and what works for us. And we learn that by experimenting, making mistakes, fine-tuning and learning how our bodies work and what they need. Guys, if you want more tips for diabetes management, then click on one of the videos on the screen right now. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. And if you want to connect with Becky, then go check the link to her channel in the show notes. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ciao!